This is not going to be about the coronavirus epidemic. According to the title, this is about desire. When the weather is harsh or menacing, we sometimes walk in the mall. Yeah, I realize that cuts into whatever is left of my man card. What can I say? I'm a geezer. While walking in the mall, you of course become aware of the surrounding advertising. That's the plan. Advert means directing towards or getting your attention. The first step in any relationship, including a sale. And while I was thinking about advertising, I started to think about desire. Advertising is external. Desire comes from within. Desire can lead to dangerous territory, what is, <clears throat> what is sometimes called sin. Or it can make our lives worth living, grace. In either case, desire is a motivating force. I think that the Buddhists say that when you are able to move beyond desire, you become a bodhisattva, a holy person, and you enter into nirvana, a state of complete bliss. Advertising cannot affect you there. Saying that reminds me of the band Nirvana and their first hit song, Smells Like Teen Spirit. I've seen a video of a performance of this. The lyrics are crazy, but the message is clear. This is a song in which there is absolutely no check on desire. It comes across as a kind of nightmare. The only way Kurt Cobain could douse his candle of desire was to blow off his head. Nirvana. I started thinking about desire in terms of someone I've been thinking about lately, though I don't know why, and that's Bob Dylan. When I'm talking about him, I'm making things up because I don't know a single damn thing about him. I know he didn't want to be Robert Zimmerman. He was ambitious. He was filled with desire. A musician, Al Cooper, said that when he was 21, at a taping of Bob Dylan's song, Like a Rolling Stone, he had about 10% of talent and 90% ambition. Robert Zimmerman wanted to be somebody, and he decided to be Bob Dylan. And because of songs like A Rolling Stone, it didn't take Bob Dylan long to become famous. And people asked him what it was like being a singer, being a protest songwriter, being a prophet, being a spokesperson. If there's one thing Bob Dylan did not want to be, it was clearly identified, not as Robert Zimmerman or this or that or anything. He immediately started playing with a band of electrified musicians and his fans all over the world hated that. And that made him feel better. They still came to hear him but they could not figure out what he was doing or why he was doing it. Fine with him. He prefers to be enigmatic and to write enigmatic songs where the meaning is like the reflection of the moon on water. And when those fans started coming around to his new sound, he recorded country music, anything to get away from any designation or label. He kept singing and being Bob Dylan, but he was also a traveling Wilbury and anybody else he wanted to be. He was still filled with desire, and when he fulfilled his desire, he moved on. When people came to find him, he was gone. And I'm sure many of his songs are about just exactly that.
Bob Dylan led me to Robbie Robertson, and that took me to the documentary movie The Last Waltz, which I intend to watch again very soon. It was directed by Martin Scorsese. Martin Scorsese makes movies about desire. He is very celebrated, and I avoid him whenever I can. For me, his movies are much too long, very repetitive, predictable, and all the same. Watching one of his movies is, a very, is very heavy on the deja vu. He makes movies about religion and faith, also movies about mobsters and their code of honor. That stems from his Italian heritage. And those movies are all the same. A quality they share is that they are at extremes. The religious figures want to be holy. They desire to do the work of God. And this puts them in opposition to society and forces them to come to harm. The mobsters are vicious, violent thugs, but they are also fiercely loyal and trustworthy. They have admirable qualities, but they are also doomed. Both the priests and the thugs live at an extreme, and they could never surrender their desires. Violence is bound to erupt. The movies are all way too long because, I think, Scorsese wants to make sure that we understand that we feel the agony of the protagonists. We, the audience, have to suffer as well as the characters, or Scorsese isn't doing his job. So he does his job, and I walk away. I've had it. Like opera, his movies beat me up, and eventually I can't take it anymore. I've got to turn it off or walk out. Desire has been good to me. I've had ambitions, and I've worked hard to make them come to fruition. Well, I thought I had worked hard. And when I was leaving the mall, I came down a long flight of steps. They were polished stone with some grooves in them and a tread so they wouldn't be slippery. And a woman, one of the cleaning staff, was bent over a step cleaning out a groove one after another hundreds, thousands of grooves in these steps with a toothbrush. I said something to her and she said, we try to take pride in our work. I laughed and said, I can see that you do, and I wished her well. Desire can fire us into unexpected directions, yet when these places or actions are examined by the light of desire, they make perfect sense.